Welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the mysterious, enigmatic world of North Korea, a country known for its secretive nature and unique cultural landscape. Join us as we uncover 10 truly bizarre and intriguing things that can only be found within the borders of this reclusive nation. From peculiar customs to extraordinary architecture, get ready to explore a side of North Korea that few have ever seen. Let's jump right in and discover these 10 weird things that only exist in North Korea. 1. The Korean Demilitarized Zone DMZ. The Korean Demilitarized Zone or DMZ is a fortified border between North and South Korea created in 1953 to end the Korean War. It stretches 4 kilometers wide and 250 kilometers long. Interestingly, the DMZ has become a wildlife refuge due to minimal human activity, making it an interesting case for ecological studies. DMZ is rich in biodiversity, hosting over 5,000 plant species, 106 mammal species, and 209 bird species. Some are rare or endangered, like the red-crowned crane and the black-faced spoonbill. The area also includes unique ecosystems like forests, wetlands, and marine habitats. 2. Kijong Dong City Ki Jong Dong, or Propaganda Village, is a settlement in the Korean DMZ built in the 1950s to promote North Korea's socialist system and encourage defection from the South. It appears to have well built buildings, schools, and farmlands and hosts one of the world's tallest flagpoles. However, many believe Ki Jong Dong to be uninhabited and fake. Critics say the buildings are just concrete shells without windows or interiors, but at night to appear occupied. The fields are said to be less productive than they seem, and the only people present are maintenance workers. Limited access to North Korea makes it hard to know the truth, but Ki Jong Dong symbolizes the ongoing tension and psychological warfare between North and South Korea. 3. The Ri Yag Yong Hotel in Pyongyang, the world's tallest unoccupied building. The Ri Yag Yong Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea, is one of the most distinctive features of the city's skyline. The 105-story pyramid-shaped skyscraper, towering over 330 metres tall, dominates the landscape, its unique and sharp-edged silhouette visible from miles around. Despite its impressive appearance, the building has never been open to the public, earning it the moniker of the world's tallest unoccupied building. Construction on the hotel began in 1987, with the intent for it to be a symbol of the country's strength and progress. The initial plan was to host at least 3,000 rooms, several restaurants, and even a revolving restaurant at the top. The construction of the Ri Yag Yong Hotel was met with numerous obstacles. The project was launched during a period of economic growth, but North Korea soon hit hard times following the collapse of the Soviet Union, one of its major supporters. Financial hardship and reported construction issues and concerns over the building's structural integrity led to the cessation of construction in 1992, leaving the hotel as an empty concrete shell for over a decade. It became a stark symbol of the failed ambitions of the North Korean government. Despite several attempts to restart and complete the project in the 2000s, with a new facade of glass panels added, the interior remains unfinished. While the exterior of the Ri Yag Yong Hotel was completed in 2011 with the help of an Egyptian company called Ordus Com, it remains closed due to ongoing concerns about the safety and feasibility of the structure. Over the years, the hotel has become a subject of fascination and speculation, with rumours and conjecture filling in the gaps left by the secretive North Korean government. Despite its unfinished status, the Ri Yag Yong Hotel has become an iconic part of North Korea's image, a strange monument to grand ambitions, unexpected difficulties, and complex political realities. Number 4. The Kingdom of Tunnels North Korea, often called the Kingdom of Tunnels, has an extensive network of underground infrastructure owing to its strategic military objectives and practical civilian needs. This network is incredibly diverse, ranging from infiltration tunnels dug under the DMZ designed for potentially military invasions to vast underground military facilities meant to house troops, store equipment and protect critical operations from possible airstrikes. These military tunnels showcase North Korea's persistent war preparedness despite the armistice signed over seven decades ago. In addition to the military infrastructure, North Korea has developed various civilian underground facilities. These include extensive subway systems in Pyongyang that double as bomb shelters, large mining operations, and even underground agricultural facilities for mushroom cultivation. These demonstrate the country's resilience and resourcefulness in the face of scarce resources and international sanctions and the government's efforts to maintain control and order in a highly militarized society. The Arirang Mass Games The Arirang Mass Games in Pyongyang, North Korea are a massive display of synchronized performances. 
They are named after Arirang, a Korean folk song. The show features over 100,000 performers and promotes North Korean ideology, history and achievements through gymnastics, dance and other performances. A standout aspect of these games is the large murals made by thousands of school children holding coloured cards. These images usually represent crucial elements of North Korean history and beliefs, such as leader portraits and depictions of achievements. The coordination required for these murals reflects North Korea's focus on unity and collective effort. The performances are impressively synchronized and include themes of patriotism, resistance against imperialism, the Korean War and the country's progress. Participants trained for a long time to perfect their parts, showing the discipline and organization common in North Korea. Despite criticism over their political nature and pressure on performers, the games remain an important cultural event. They provide a glimpse into North Korean society and serve as a means for promoting unity and propaganda. Number 6. Traffic Ladies of Pyongyang In the capital city of Pyongyang, a unique aspect of North Korean life plays out in the middle of the roads, the so-called Traffic Ladies. This group of women, formerly known as the Traffic Security Officers, are responsible for directing traffic across the city. Beyond their practical function, they have become a symbolic figure representing authority, beauty and order in North Korean society. The traffic ladies are easily recognized by their crisp, impeccably maintained blue uniforms, white gloves and directed balletic movements as they manage the city's traffic. They are selected based on strict criteria that include age, appearance and height, among other things. After their selection, they undergo rigorous training to learn the precise movements and rules associated with the role. Their function is not merely to direct traffic due to Pyongyang's relatively low volume of vehicles. This wouldn't necessitate such a large and devoted workforce. Instead, the traffic ladies serve a symbolic role. Their precision, discipline and uniformity represent some of the values the North Korean regime promoted, order, control and respect for authority. In a way, they can be seen as living embodiment of the nation's commitment to discipline. The traffic ladies also hold a paradoxical position in North Korean society, both prominent public figures and depersonalized state symbols. Their constant presence on the streets of Pyongyang makes them familiar to city residents, but their role as state functionaries also distances them from the public. This duality underscores the complexity of public life in North Korea, where state authority is pervasive and interwoven with everyday experiences. Number 7. Hair Rules In North Korea, the government exercises a high degree of control over many aspects of public and private life, including personal appearance. State-controlled haircuts are an intriguing example of this. North Korea has reportedly issued guidelines dictating acceptable hairstyles for men and women, aimed at promoting what the regime deems to be a more conservative, socialist style. This approach discourages Western influences and maintains conformity within the population. For men, the state-approved hairstyles range from short, neatly trimmed cuts to slightly longer styles, with hair length reportedly not allowed to exceed a specific limit. The hairstyles reflect a clean, military-like appearance that holds a socialist spirit. For women, the recommended hairstyles vary depending on their marital status. Unmarried women are usually encouraged to keep their hair short, while married women have more options for slightly longer and curlier styles. These rules are less rigid for older men and women who are allowed more freedom in their choice of hairstyle. While these rules may seem unusual to outsiders, they form part of a broader pattern of strict social control in North Korea, where the state seeks to regulate many aspects of people's lives. This regulation of hairstyles symbolizes the regime's desire to control personal expression and uphold its values. These policies underscore the North Korean government's concern with preserving a particular image of the nation and its people, both for its domestic audience and the international community. However, it is worth noting that the precise enforcement of these regulations is difficult to gauge given North Korea's close-off nature. Reports have suggested some flexibility and variation in practice, especially in more recent years. Number 8. Cult of Personality North Korea is renowned for the deep and pervasive cult of personality surrounding its ruling Kim family. This cult of personality is a form of state worship that venerates the country's leaders as godlike figures and presents them as the ultimate source of national power and wisdom. The founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung, who ruled from 1948 until he died in 1994, is at the core of this state ideology. Even after his death, he continues to be revered as the eternal president, and his birth anniversary, known as the Day of the Sun, is the most important national holiday in the country. 
Following Kim Il-sung, his son Kim Jong-il and his grandson Kim Jong-un, the current leader, have continued this tradition and have been similarly deified. Like his father, Kim Jong-il is revered in death and was given the posthumous title of Eternal General Secretary of the Workers' Party of North Korea. North Korea maintains the Kim Soo san Palace of the Sun in Pyongyang, a mausoleum where the bodies of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il are preserved in glass coffins, which is treated as a pilgrimage site by North Koreans. The cult of personality is critical in North Korea's political system. It is embedded in every aspect of the country's life, from education to art, and it is used as a tool of political control and social order. The Kim's family deification fosters an environment of absolute loyalty and obedience, maintaining the political status quo and ensuring the regime's survival. It effectively intertwines the nation's identity with the ruling family, thereby making any criticism or opposition to the leaders treasonous. This reverence for the leaders helps the regime to maintain control and stability in a country that has experienced considerable economic hardship and international isolation. Number 9. Law and Order North Korea maintains law and order with strict rules, constant surveillance and a robust propaganda system. The country follows a socialist legal system guided by Korean culture, socialism and self-reliance ideology called Juchia. This system is managed by the Supreme People's Assembly, the top authority in North Korea. The state's widespread surveillance network is a crucial part of law and order. The government uses informants and regularly checks homes to ensure rules are followed. Three leading security organizations help in this, the secret police, the regular police, and the military security. They watch for any signs of disobedience or unrest. People breaking the rules are punished harshly. It has been reported that the government has employed collective punishment tactics. The most notorious form is arguably the three generations of punishment rule. Reportedly, if a person is convicted of a serious crime and sent to a prison camp, their immediate family can also be incarcerated, and the subsequent two generations born in the camps remain there as a form of ongoing punishment. This policy is widely condemned by the international community as a gross human rights violation. North Korea also uses a social ranking system called Songban, which rates citizens based on their family's loyalty to the government. This affects every part of a person's life, like job chances, where they live, and access to education and healthcare. People are often too afraid of lowering their rank to challenge the government. Along with this, state propaganda ensures loyalty to the state and the Kim family and discourages opposition. These strategies help the government maintain tight control over law and order in North Korea. Number 10. Farming of Slopes and Hillsides in North Korea, like in many nations facing agricultural challenges, the struggle to provide enough food for the population has led to some distinctive strategies and land use practices. One of these strategies is extensive cultivation on slopes and hillsides. Due to the country's mountainous terrain, flat arable land is limited. Only about 14 to 16% of the country's total land area is suitable for cultivation. This has led to intensive use of every possible piece of land for cultivation, including steep hills and mountainsides. This practice of terracing and cultivating slopes has created unique agricultural landscapes throughout the country, with fields ascending up hillsides in step-like terraces. These terraces help reduce soil erosion and allow for the cultivation of crops on land that would otherwise be unsuitable for agriculture. Crops such as rice, corn, potatoes, soybeans and various fruits are grown on these terrace fields. However, while the terracing of hillsides has increased the available agricultural land, it has also had a significant environmental impact. Clearing steep slopes for cultivation can lead to soil erosion and degradation, loss of forest cover and increased landslide vulnerability. These ecological effects, outdated agricultural techniques, inconsistent weather patterns and economic sanctions contribute to ongoing challenges in North Korean agriculture. Therefore, the terrace landscapes, while visually unique and indicative of human ingenuity in the face of scarcity, also bear the marks of environmental strain and the struggle for food security. As we wrap up, it's important to remember that North Korea, for all its eccentricities and stringent rules, is a place of rich culture and history. While we've explored some of the most peculiar aspects that might seem strange or even outlandish to outsiders, these all make North Korea such an intriguing and enigmatic nation. From state-controlled haircuts to the monumental RR Rang mass games, these phenomena give us a glimpse into a unique society primarily secluded from the rest of the world. Thanks for joining us on this journey and stay tuned for more fascinating explorations from around the globe. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more exciting content. Until next time.